All right, guys, today we're gonna to talk about who did it better. And what I mean by that is Spyderco Smock versus the Benchmade 940. Now, often on this channel, you hear me talk a lot about how the Smock is essentially Spyderco's response, long-awaited response to the infamous Benchmade 940 Osborne. And I do think that that still largely holds true. When you guys look at these two knives, they are very similar in height, very similar in thickness, blade thickness, overall length, both open and closed. They're just very similar knives. And moreover too, they're very similar in design ethos because these are both designed to be very pocket friendly, very slim, very narrow blades that just slip in the pocket and hide well. So you can just carry it and forget you even have a knife. But in this video, I wanted to go over which one does it better. So first off, we have the Spite or the Benchmade 940 Osborne, pretty classic blade and it is a really well-selling blade. Unarguably, between the Griptilian and the 940, these are what made Benchmade the knife um, company that they are today. We'll, see, we'll just use that word. Now, the Smock, like I said, is definitely a much newer knife. It has a lot less heritage than the 940, but it also, I think the biggest thing it has going for it is it has a lot of modernized features. Unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, depending on how you look at it, the Benchmade 940, at least in its classic aluminum handled version, is the same essential knife that it has been for the last over 20 years. So it's not really a new knife and therefore it doesn't have things like flipper tabs because at the time flipper knives weren't really a thing. It doesn't have uh, bearings in its pivot because once again that wasn't really a thing and of course it still has the same classic axis lock. Now those are some of the primary advantages that the Smock has over the original 940 is that it's just a newer knife. It has a compression lock um, as far as its lockup goes. It also has you know a number of updates, like I said, like bearings, like flippers, and all of those updated designs make it a slightly, in my opinion, more appealing option for everyday carry. Now, the few things that really set the smock for me apart and make it just that little bit better really come back to design. Now, undoubtedly, of course, you're watching my channel. It's going to be my opinion. I do think the smock is my preferred one primarily because of a few reasons. The first one is, of course, it does have that forward finger choil. That forward finger choil undoubtedly is one of my like things that I love about knives. My favorite knives, things like the Hinder XM18 um, and other knives, I love so much because they have that forward finger choil. I love being able to get right up on that cutting edge when I'm doing fine tasks and just have good control over the very cutting edge. The next thing for me really has to come down to the hollow grind. The hollow grind for I really wish that more knife companies would adopt hollow grinds. Like you see them on Chris Reeve knives, but outside of Chris Reeve knives and a handful of, you know, just random knives, you really never see hollow grinds. And it's very unfortunate because for EDC knives, especially, you know, this, uh, the argument can be made the hollow grinds aren't the toughest, but if you're just opening boxes, cutting open packages, stuff like that, you know, you really don't need a super robust or overbuilt um, grind. And so what that hollow grind allows you to have is a very thin amount of steel behind that very cutting edge, giving you that extra sliciness. And lastly, for me, I think the other thing that I love about the smock over the 940 is the fact that this flipper tab is not only there, but it's so well integrated into the design that you know you have this flipper tab, but unlike on most flipper knives where it protrudes and it's obvious, this is very well blended into the overall symmetry of the knife and still is extremely effective. Lastly, I will say too, I think that I really do love the bearings on this. It is very, very smooth as you, as you guys can already tell, like an incredibly smooth opening, closing knife. And that is really the key points to why I love this knife. I'd say the last one, the one that honestly the uh, 940 does have some commonalities with is the amount of customizations. As you guys can already see, you know, I do have a custom clip on here, custom screws, custom titanium, um, what is this, a button for the lock like I guess it's not really the lock itself, but it's a custom button for that. And so you can do endless customizations to this knife and really make it your own like personal blade. Now stepping over to the stepping over to the 940 from the smock, the biggest dislike that I have with the smock 
is that it has this really weird no man's land in between where they want you to put your fingers in the back and your choke up point. There's just this weird no man's land where it doesn't really feel comfortable to hold the knife and it's not really designed to be held in that way. What I like about the 940 is it is a very well thought out blade and it doesn't have a flipper, doesn't run on bearings, but there are no wasted spaces here. And even with the fact that you don't have a forward finger troll, you still can get fairly close to the back of the cutting edge. Now, of course, this one is a little bit used and very well broken in. So I wouldn't say that this is exactly representative of how smooth a factory or like out of box fresh Benchmade 940 is. But the really nice thing about washers is that if you use your knife for an extended period of time, years, you carry it, you open it, you close it, maybe you even fidget with it, you will break in those washers. And this goes for any knife that runs on, you know, like uh, phosphorus bronze washers, you will break it in and it gets very smooth. Like you guys can see, this is every bit as smooth as the smock is, if not slightly more. Now, granted, the smock is, and so this one is much more broken in and a little bit more used. So of course it is smooth, but it shows a good progression that these can get that smooth. Now, as far as it goes, the biggest thing that I dislike about the 940 and the reason why I don't love carrying it goes back to its very, very thin profile. Now, overall, I will say it's not much thinner than the smock, but yet it feels much thinner because it has this very straight, like narrow profile to the blade and to the handle. And when you hold this thing, it feels like you're holding a twig or like a small stick, and it just doesn't feel that great in my hand. If you guys have been around the channel for any time, you know I love knives that just fit like they fill your hand. And this knife just doesn't quite do that for me. That doesn't necessarily that doesn't necessarily make it a bad knife. And I will say the previous generations of 940s that I had were all synthetic handled. So they were either aluminum or sorry, they were either G10, they were carbon fiber. And I will say, I do think that the aluminum handled version of the 940 is the best one to get. Not because it's cheaper, but because that weight and that feeling of aluminum just makes this knife feel like a, it gives it a little bit more heft, makes it feel a little bit more natural. So I will say if someone was to get a 940, I would definitely recommend the aluminum handled version uh, for that reason. It is not quite as nice as carbon fiber, and you guys know I love my carbon fiber, but at the same time too, uh, this does make it feel a lot better. Now that is the primary kind of drawback to the 940 that I have, but honestly, I will say, I think it's a pretty well squared away blade. And for its age, I do have to give it credit. It holds up very well. And even though I'm not the largest fan of Benchmade as a rule, the 940 definitely is a really good cult classic that, like I said, it, it holds well it holds up well to the test of time. However, due to the fact that the smock is newer and it takes advantage of newer manufacturing and design processes, things like flippers, things like ball bearings, I will give the edge to the smock in my opinion. I also like the fact on the smock that it has a multiple ways of opening it. You can flick it with uh, your thumb, or sorry, your middle finger, you can open it, slow roll it with your thumb. You can also, of course, flip it with the flipper tab, but it really just is a very versatile knife to open and close. Both are, I will say, left hand friendly, right hand friendly. Um, but yeah, I do give the slight edge to the smock. I think the smock is just a little bit better. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed seeing this comparison and who did it better. As always, guys, God bless, and I'm out.